It's Maxine here from Northumberland Zoo and Sarah and today we're going to be teaching you guys about habitats and adaptations. Yeah so what we'd like you to think about by the end of this video is you'll understand what a habitat is and how our animals are adapted to suit them. We're going to be focusing on a few different species we're going to be looking at the raccoons and the meerkats and we'll have a special bonus content at the end about snow leopards as well. To kickstart our activity we want you to do all the legwork so we have provided a little activity sheet uh, with our lesson and Sarah is going to explain exactly what you need to do. Yeah, so what we would like you to do is think about a raccoon habitat. Think about what does it need to have, what does it need to include. When you've drawn your picture you can put little notes around the side of it as well and we'll see you in a moment. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope that you guys enjoyed designing your habitats for the raccoons. So what is a habitat? A habitat is a place that contains all of the things that an animal needs to survive. For example, like food and shelter. In our enclosure here at the zoo, we have eight raccoons, five boys and three girls. They have various types of trees, including a really large oak tree, which they love to climb and sleep in. Throughout the year, these trees produce a variety of fruits and seeds, which the raccoons can help themselves to. In this enclosure, there's also a large pond where the raccoons like to spend time foraging for food and cooling down. Our indoor house has two bedrooms, so there's plenty of space for them to shelter. Even though the trees provide a natural form of enrichment for the raccoons, we also provide them with artificial enrichment on a daily basis. These include mini water baths for playing in, a tire swing, platforms to climb on, and puzzle feeders. So now that you've seen our raccoon habitat, go back and have a look at your worksheet again. Have a think about what you would change, how you would improve it, and what you would like to include this time. Now that we've had a really, really good look at raccoons, I think it's time to move on to some different animals here in the zoo. We're going to show you two different animals from two different extreme habitats. Uh, we'll start off by showing you some shots of what their habitats are and see if you can guess who lives where. For our first species, take a look at these different shots and have a guess who you think might live in this habitat. If you guess meerkat, then you are correct. Meerkats are from Southern Africa, from the Kalahari Desert. It is very hot in the daytime and below freezing at nighttime, so the meerkats have adapted in order to suit the extreme temperatures. Like raccoons, they have black patches around their eyes which act like sunglasses to prevent the sun burning their eyes. Meerkats have really long front claws, which are perfect for digging. They dig massive complex burrows that can house up to 50 meerkats. At night time, they sleep on top of each other to conserve heat in their burrow. Meerkats are a diurnal species, which means that they are only active during the day. So first thing in the morning, when it's really cool, they need to absorb as much heat as possible from the sun. And they do this by having black skin and sunbathing first thing in the morning. This way they absorb loads of heat and get warmed up really quickly. Meerkats have also developed a complex defense system which involves sentry duty. This is where they sit at a high vantage point so that they can spot predators and threats from a distance. They then give out an alarm call which tells the rest of the mob to bolt into the burrow for safety. Their sandy color helps them to blend in with their dry, arid environment. They have long tails with black tips which they use as visual beacons to help spot each other. These tails are also useful to help them balance. They are omnivores. They have very strong, sharp teeth, perfect for biting through scorpions and other hard insects. Here at the zoo, our enclosure has got a deep, sandy base. 
so that they can dig their burrows. They also have a heated indoor area so that they can go and get warm if the British weather is not to their liking. We also provide them with tall structures from which they can do their sentry duty. For our next part of the Habitats and Adaptations lessons, uh, I am down here at our brand new Snow Leopard exhibit. Now, a lot of you might not have been able to have seen this exhibit yet, because it was literally brand new at the beginning of December, and the girls moved in uh, very, very early days in December. So they've literally only been here for like six weeks. Now, when you're talking about Habitats and Adaptations, the Snow Leopards is the one that you can obviously point loads of different things at. So here we are down at the enclosure, for those of you who haven't managed to get down to the zoo yet. Um, the girls, I think, are outside at the moment, but I want to show you their indoor house because it was very, very special. A lot of thought went into this. The indoor house is very, very rocky. Um, so this is all what's called mock rock. Now, mock rock is basically uh, artificial rock, so it's fake. Um, I know it looks, <laughs> it looks real. It's not. Um, so it's actually made of cement. So we've especially got someone in to come in and build these little wooden frames, which then they've covered with mesh, and then they cover it with uh, cement, and then they carve it and paint it to make it look like rock. Now, usually nine times out of 10, the girls have been hanging out in this house because they love it so much, but it's such a chilly day today that they're probably outside just enjoying the last rays of the sun before the sun goes down. Um, so inside of here, the thought process uh, for designing this indoor enclosure was to allow them to have a space in the summer months when it's really, really hot. Because snow leopards come from really, really high altitude, high places up in the mountains in Asia and in the Middle East. And where they come from, it's so, so cold. So what we wanted to do was provide them with a cooler indoor den to kind of take refuge in the summer because they don't really want to be outside in the sun when it's like 25 degrees. So by having this indoor den and the way that it's been constructed, it's nice and insulated, it's lovely and cool. So it actually feels cooler in here than it does outside. Um, now that might be a little bit uncomfortable for us, but for the cats, it's perfect. Now, snow leopards have really, really dense fur. So it's super, super thick. It keeps them nice and warm. That's one of their main adaptations. And then one of the other adaptations to note is their long, long tail. They have the longest tail of any cat species. And the reason for that is they can then wrap it around their faces when they're curled up to go to sleep. So it keeps their faces and their noses nice and warm. Now it looks like we've been joined by one of them. She's coming in for a little look, come to see what we're doing. Stalking her, suspicious. Oh, there's the other one. Hi, girlies. One of the other adaptations that you'll notice, which is extremely striking of a snow leopard, is obviously its markings. Have a little look at Neva's tail and have a look at her back. She's got these lovely little black rosettes on her fur and that helps with camouflage. Um, so basically, oh, she's doing a little pose for us. Basically, that really breaks up their shape in their habitat. And that's a really good thing because that basically means that their food source, their prey source, won't necessarily see them coming. And the other really cool thing that she's showing us right now are these white tufts on the back of her ears. Now that's really cool because it almost looks like eyes. It's quite striking. So if there's ever anybody behind her looking to look uh, to kind of spook her or jump on her, um, those little white tufts can be quite confusing to someone who's looking at her. So it will make them think twice before they kind of pounce on her. Now, the other really notable feature about a snow leopard is how wide their muzzle is. <laughs> She's really showing off for us here. Hello, how you doing? The nasal cavity on a snow leopard is really, really wide. And the reason for that is that they have this kind of a larger capacity in their face that when they breathe the cold air in, it's kind of got a bit of a heater in it and it heats the air before it gets to the lungs. So basically they're not bringing in freezing cold air and putting it straight into their body and chilling themselves. So it goes into the nose, gets warmed up and then goes into the lungs where it's already preheated. So that's a really, really good adaptation. Now she's doing a really nice job for us. So now she's got her paws out. She's got huge, big, wide paws. I mean, they're massive. And when she stretches them out, they're even bigger. Um, and that's perfect. That's a perfect adaptation because what that does is that it makes the paws really wide so that she can stand on top of the snow rather than sink into the snow. If you imagine that you have a really pointy foot, it'll just go stab straight into the snow. 
Whereas if you've got a nice big wide one, it spreads the weight of the cat out on top of the snow so they don't sink. So that's another really good adaptation. Looking at the ears again, she's got very dinky ears. So they don't stick up far from her body. That means that she won't lose as much heat. So she'll retain a lot of her heat. Um, if she had really big floppy ears like an elephant, she'd lose all of her heat really, really quickly. Now, talking about the tail again, obviously her tail is kind of bent round and kind of on the ground there. That is long enough to reach up and go all the way around her head, but it's also really, really beneficial for jumping and maneuvering and balance. If you imagine they're trying to chase their prey, which is like mountain goats and mountain sheep and things like that, they're trying to chase them around the mountains and around the rocks. They need really good balance. So that tail kind of whacks about and keeps them on the level so that they don't fall over and they don't fall down the mountain. Now, as we can see, the other girly is at the top there, taking her position. Like I said before, cats love to have that kind of position way up high where they're overlooking their domain. They don't like feeling like they're being looked down on. They feel much more confident if they're up a height, hence why we've put them in this indoor den. So when you're thinking about designing a new habitat or an enclosure for a species, there's lots of different things you need to consider. Not only do you need to consider the adaptations that the animal has and what it is that they're actually suited for, but you need to consider other factors like social dynamics and groupings. Now, naturally in the wild, snow leopards are solitary. Now, solitary means that they live on their own. Now, these two girls here, they are sisters. So they're only about a year and a half old. Um, and they will more than likely live together quite happily for the rest of their lives. But just in case they don't, we have designed their habitat so that we can split them. So if they decide that one day that they don't really like each other anymore and they like their own space, we can actually give them both indoor access and also outdoor access so they can each have their own paddock and they can each have their own indoor house. Um, and that just makes it comfortable for them living long term. So all of these things need to take precedent when planning their enclosures. There she goes. She's had enough of the education. But you can see how long her tail is. It's stunning, isn't it? Another really interesting fact about these, I mean, it's not really an adaptation or anything like that, but these are the only big cats that can't roar. They can kind of growl and kind of grunt at you, but they can't roar. So really, really weird. Now, I don't know if she's going to jump for us there, but quite comfortably, she could, if she wanted to, jump from where she stood there all the way over to that rock over there. So these guys can clear about a four meter gap. That's like 16 feet. That's really, really long. And again, that's really beneficial from where they come from because if they're chasing their, um, their prey, either the mountain goat or the mountain sheep through the mountains, you know, sometimes there's big crevices and stuff they need to jump over. So they need to be able to make that jump. And they have these huge, big, long back legs to help catapult them across the gaps. So everything about a snow leopard is perfectly designed for where they live. And we've done our best to provide them with the best artificial habitat that we can. enjoyed that sneak peek into the snow leopard enclosure. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you've learned all about habitats, adaptations, and you have a better understanding about how zoos design habitats to match the different animal adaptations. So uh, thank you very much guys and we'll see you soon.